Tschüssi. Welcome, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2022 Valero Texas Open. This is my, yes, top-notch pick show with a focus on DFS on the GPP larger tournament side. But you can use these picks. I think they're going to do well in heads up, cash, whatever it is. Um, yeah, definitely use them. I'm going to go through my top 15 picks do the analysis, talk a little bit about the guys that I'm not selecting and why. And with that said, thank you for stopping by. Give me about uh, 30, 40 minutes, and I'll get you through this and hopefully get you an edge. Put a few bucks in your pocket this week, and also I'll cover my one-and-done picks for you. And with that said, let's talk some golf. First, let's talk about my giveaway, and you might be asking, what is this? I'm going to be randomly giving away $100 to five random individuals that of course are subscribers. And with that said, all you need to do to get in this giveaway is click that like button. If you know somebody else that might be interested in this information, share it with them. If you've not subscribed, please click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I do three shows a week, hopefully giving you the best information without any BS, straight to the point, just the facts. And with that said, just tell me who you think is gonna win the Masters and you'll be put into the drawing, and then I will notify you to send me your PayPal email address to forward those funds over if you win. I will announce the winners on my Before the Lock show next week, which will be Wednesday. Okay, if you missed my show yesterday, I always go over how do you win this event, the Valero Texas Open, and I do it by looking at the skill sets we need, of course, then breaking that down to stroke gain analysis rankings. Number one thing that is most important is you have to hit the fairways here. There's not a lot of room uh, between the fairway and the rough. You get like 10 yards, 15 yards of rough. And then you're into trees and rocks and native grass. So without hitting the fairways, you're, you're hosed right off the bat. So we need guys that are very accurate, not so much worried about distance. Next thing, of course, approach. These are very tricky greens. You got to know the quadrants. You got to have some experience here. There's a lot of runoffs. So approach is next. I uh, did a little more research. I just mentioned about the greens. Yes, you are going to have to have a good short game. Uh, good around the green uh, even though that in 2019 that didn't show up with the top five guys that placed at least in a few of them but everything else that i did from a stroke gain analysis said yes you're gonna have to be good around the green i'm leaving ball striking it or not weighted super heavily but i do want just another kind of bringing the t to green game end effect uh you got to be a pretty good putter here that shows up of course like uh when landry or spieth won uh, all the guys have gained quite a bit of strokes putting here Got to do a little bit of scrambling, and you also, there's a ton of sand and a ton of deep, big, huge sand bunkers, uh, so you're going to have to be able to get out of the sand. The number one prox to pin that shows up is the 150 to 175, uh, over 20% of the time. That's where the shots are going to be coming in from, so we're going to look at that. Uh, also, the next ones would be 75 to 100, then 100 to 125. You add those together, that's over 22% of the time. Uh, of course, there's four par fives on here, and two are over 600 yards. Two are between the 550 and 600. With that said, as always, you have to make hay on the par fives. And then you got uh, three long par threes, four total, but you got three long ones between 200 and 225. Good part of the course defense, so we're looking for guys that are good at that. And then last but not least, I mean, average score here is somewhere between 1,700 to 2,800. So guys need to make birdies, if possible, eagles. There is some drivable par fours. Uh, of course, you got some shorter par fives. And then birdie or bad opportunity. So that was the larger model I did. Uh, today's going to be a focus on a more concise, smaller model when I go through the analysis, uh, pulling out the key ones of these. And then, as always, I always do take a look at uh, how these guys done on comparable courses. This is the one course I don't, you know, there is some decent fits, but because of the field, um, there's not as many. There's not like uh, when you get like to an RBC or an RSM, like the smaller, very tactical courses. Like, this is a little bigger boy, boy course, but it's also you have to be very accurate. So with that said, Sanderson Farms, it is Bermuda Greens, it is around 7,400 yards, par 72, and it has trees. So that's probably the best. Then the Houston Open, Wells Fargo, and uh, API. Uh, API has more water, and it's not as so tree-lined, but uh, you can definitely get problems there. And then I threw RBC Heritage in. Uh, just I wanted to see, because guys that do well there get to be very accurate, very small greens. It is Bermuda. So I think it resonates. And I mentioned uh, also the John Deere Seemed like there was a few guys that kept kind of crossing over, so maybe I'll look at that too. All right, with that said, let's go jump over and do some analysis, and then after that, I'll summarize my top 15 plays for you guys.
for this DFS contest coming up. Okay, so I've jumped over to Fantasy National, and again, my little spoof for those guys, if you are doing your own analysis and uh, want to do a little more analysis, uh, this tool is the best out there. It's everything about golf, and you can do so many different things. So that's my little plug. Uh, real quick, just give you what we're going to be looking at here. Of course, uh, I'm going to be using DraftKings pricing, but of course you can use this information and picks in FanDuel, Yahoo, whatever your choice of DFS format is. Uh, over here, you're going to see I'm going to be looking at the last 12 rounds. So that's what this data is. It's the last three tournaments or, you know, they may have missed a cut. The total of 12 rounds. Uh, I'm not going to go through and use the comparable courses so much. Uh, I'm just going to use the last three events they played. I've got no filters on. I've already done a filter. Uh, but, well, I, I did a model before this one that really focused on driving, uh, hitting fairways, and then kind of went with this model that uh, has five key stroke gain areas. Good drives, approach around the green, that proxy the pin that shows up 20% of the time, and then putting. You also are going to see here birdies are the last 12 rounds. So, of course, the higher the green, good. You see red, not good. Um, I've identified 15 players out of the 144 that I like. And last but not least, you can see over here, which, you know, it's probably the quickest way is, what have they done over the last five tournaments, recent results, and then, of course, tournament history. So right off the bat, right, you've got some decisions here, and I'm going by pricing, pricing levels. Uh, the number one price guy, no shocker, Rory. Of course, coming here for a bit of a tune-up. Um, has played here one time, as you saw and had a second place that's way back in 2013. You can see he's been in good form. Um, you know, even had a chance, of course, to win over the DP World Tour before he kind of made his track over here, for like the Genesis, Arnold Palmer, the players. So he's been in good form. I'm not gonna go into really anything else. I think you know enough about Rory, and usually I do not pick the most expensive number one guy, but this field is pretty rough. And I'm kind of going with a little bit of a scrubs in the, or stars and scrubs, whatever you want to call it, a um, little top heavy uh, because I like the top two guys and then I don't like a lot of the other guys. And then when we get down to eights and nines. So long story short, you got five guys, uh, four at the 10,000 and one at the 11. I'm going to go with Rory. Like I said, it's a little rare for me. I thought that I would probably fade him, but the more I kind of just kept thinking about it, I mean, I mentioned that you, you got to hit fairways, but if you can hit fairways with accuracy, um, that's going to be a huge gain uh, against the field for you, you know, because again, a lot less coming in. So the more I kind of thought about it, I'm going to land on Rory and go with it and hope that, uh, you know, he's not here just for a pure tune up that he does want to do well. So we'll see how that all pans out. Next guy is Hideki, and again, I was honestly thinking about fading him uh, because, of course, right, he pulled out of the players, skipped the WGC, um, but is also coming here for a tune-up. And so, of course, he also is your past Masters winner. And I'm trying to figure out if his mind's going to be a little bit on next weekend, uh, worrying about his menu and his dinner list. But this course suits him well. Uh, you can see he's been playing really good golf already. He's even had a, another win before the Sony Open. Played here also once and had a T30. So, you know, you kind of got to pick a lane. Uh, one lane is you might not want to pick some guys because there's a whole WGC, and we're going to get into that about guys that played a ton of golf there. Both these guys are coming in fresh, but then you're like, well, where's their brain? What, what, where are they going to be focused? Do they really care about the Valero? And at one time, like I said, I was kind of thinking about, you know, I'm going to stay off these guys because I'm so worried about them focused on the Masters. But, you know, if you, if you get rid of these two guys, I just don't like what's below. So uh, I don't think, again, I have to sell you on these guys. You can see, you know, from a modeling perspective, they're ranked 11th and 18th from that model out of uh, the past 12 rounds. And you can also see both of them making a ton of birdies and no reason why um, you can't play. But you can also see Hideki's actually been putting, you know, out of this field. He's 25th out of 144 players. Uh, really, you can look at Rory and, and have more concerns on that side. Also, Rory, a little bit of struggle with the short irons, right? That, I would say out of everything, that's where he's probably had the, the most trouble, where he's hitting those approaches from 150 below and, you know, not sticking it where he should. So, again, that's where I'm at. Uh, Jordan Spieth, of course, your past winner. Uh, he just played the WGC. I think, what, he, did he win a match? I don't remember. He definitely didn't get out of his pod. 
Um, I'm concerned about Jordan's swing. That's the short of it. If you know the golf swing and watch what he does in his kind of pre warm up uh, every time, he is kind of working on what I call coming over the top, which is promoting to not hook the ball, uh, is to make sure that, you know, for him, I guess that's his concern. Because anybody that is kind of practicing at the top that you're coming outside in, so he's the short of it, he's fiddling with his swing. And so with that said, I'm out on, on Jordan until I see some better results. It has nothing to do with the players. I think he had a bad draw. I don't I think he was an afternoon guy. Um, you know, he had a good show at Pebble Beach, but total different track. Um, you know, so does Phil Mickelson and then misses every cut other, you know, except for the PGA championship. But anyways, yeah, I just haven't seen enough. I mean, of course he's had you know, Texas guy, local, has had, you know, good past results. I mean, you can't really look at 2015, but you can say off 2021, but he was playing a different game. He was coming in to this with, with a lot better form. Um, so that's my personal opinion. I think Abraham answer, I'm shocked that he's not a little higher owned. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be excited what he did at the WGC, and he played good golf. I mean, I'm not going to hold that against him, but, you know, he's been doing one thing pretty well. He's still hitting fairways. Uh, but everything else has not been where I wanted to see it. So with that said, you can see his past history here. He makes cuts, but he doesn't for that 10-3 price tag. Um, you know, that's a lot. That's a bit also what got me back to Hideki was for $500 more, uh, I'd rather go with Hideki who can win. I know Abraham Answer has a win. It's a different kind of track. It's a shorter, you know, it's a WGC FedEx St. Jude. Um that's kind of where I picture where he can do damage is like what he just played at Austin Country Club, a shorter, more kind of plotter track. There's some reasons you could say he'd be a good play here. Um, but yeah, for me, I'm out. I think people are nuts if they're going to play Bryson. Um, I'll just put it that way right now. Right now, projected ownership's at 9%. He's stated that he's really kind of testing his hand to see if he needs surgery or not. And you could see he was all over the map at the WGC. It got a little better. So we can say he knocked a little rust off. The putter was good. Funny enough, you can see his putting, which I'm a little shocked about over his last, well, that was back. So you got the, yeah, that's a while ago. That's over a couple months ago. So I'm not really worried about, I mean, the putter looked good. Um, it's everything else with him. He, I don't think he was in that great of form coming in. So for 10-2, no thank you. Um, so that's why I've kind of Skipping over those 10 guys, and then uh, Corey Connors. My concern here is, right, he played a ton of golf, over 100-some holes. Um, but, of course, you know, past winner here, has a 14th of 26. You know, he does what I want. I don't care about distance. He hits fairways. He got, He's getting sharper with his irons. And the putter looked really good. Now, will that show up? And you can see he's going to be super chalky. Um, but with this field... It's kind of hard not to play him. Um, I don't think I need to sell you on him, so I'm not going to even go into, I mean, if you want to see, we'll click on him for you. You know, hits at almost 300, uh, but he's almost 70% hitting the fairways. That's really all I need. And then past history, and, uh, you know, I can click on if you just want to see. Of course, I mentioned he won the Valero. He had a second at Sanderson Farms, which I think is the best. Um Comp course, and then you have API, Arnold Palmer, Bay Hill. He had a third there in uh, not too long ago, about a year ago. Uh, there's the RBC. So, like, he ticks every box. So, now, if or somehow you fade him because he's going to be super chalky, you know, you know what, I'll probably build some lineups without him just because if he's at 20 25% when it all shakes out, and I'll go over that tomorrow with you guys over ownership projections. Um, but right now, yeah, he's, he's definitely in my uh, top five picks. Okay, moving down the board, we got uh, Siwoo Kim at 9,600. That's a lot of money to pay for a volatile Siwoo Kim. You can see he's had a good course history here. He's had uh, a T4 back in 2014. Uh, this is not a P die course, which we all know that Siwoo Kim is a great P die. Uh, that's over at the Canyons. Um, even Davis Riley, just so you know, yes, he won at the uh, TPC San Antonio, but that was on the Canyons, not the same course. Um, this is the AT&T Oaks course. Anyways, with that said, you know, just not enough from Siwoo um, that I'm putting in my top 15 for you guys. Of course, he WD from the players because, you know, he had the bad draw. Um, 73rd at the Genesis, you know, not too bad here. So 
Typical Siwoo, I mean, you know, I'll see where ownership comes in. Will I put him in a few lineups? Maybe. But uh, for you guys, if you want, you know, I'll give you my top 15 plays. He is not in it. Mad McNeely, this course just doesn't, for me, fit it now. Of course, he had a, I would say, a pretty good WGC, right? I know he didn't make it out of his pod. I think he was the only one that went 2-0 and maybe 1. I think he had two wins, a tie. I don't think he had a loss. But, uh, you know, so he's playing decent golf. Uh, I, again, think that that course suits him very well, and I should have probably dug thought about that a little more. I kind of skipped over him. Uh, I know he was the last man in. But long story short, I don't see this course fitting him. You could see over his last, you know, three tournaments that nothing's really going well except the putter. Um, you know, 73rd at the API, barely, you know, just the last guy in to make the cut. Um, I like him at – I like him on the West Coast. I like him on shorter tracks. Um, so that's Matt McNeely. Chris Kirk, you know, it's funny. He's a good bet, which I think a lot of people, you know, is are betting him because it's either – He's either like a top 10 or he's missing the cut here. It's been a really good form. Of course, he missed the cut at the players. I don't remember if he was an afternoon or not, but he's been in impeccable form. Uh, Arnold Palmer, which I said is a pretty good comparable course. You know, a tough track at the Honda, a T14 at the Phoenix. Funny enough, missed the cut at Pebble Beach, which I don't know if that was just, you know, I want to go see how he can miss the cut at Pebble Beach. I feel like that is just such an easy track. But you can see a lot like Corey Connors, it's about 300. Uh, very accurate, about 64%. And what did you do so bad at Pebble Beach? Ah, that's what I was wondering. Didn't putt. Okay, was just curious. Uh, we also click on him where he's had some of his success. Charles Schwab, um, it's a tight track, right? The Colonial, um, RSM. So it's kind of funny. You could also state, well, here's some short tracks he's done well, but he's also had a second way back uh, at Sanderson Farms, which I like that. Again, a, you know, shorter tracks, but they're a fifth. Recently, of course, at Arnold Palmer, six at Valero. So, yeah, I mean, RBC, um, the guy does what I want. It's going to be depend, the putter, but you can see the putter has been good over the last three tournaments. So I'm going to be plugging in Chris Kirk quite a bit. So is a lot of other people. Um, this is a first in a long time. If you guys have been with me for a while, I haven't picked Gary Woodland. I couldn't even tell you how long. It's been over a year easily, maybe a year and a half. But I do finally feel like he's healthy. I mean, I think he fought it for a while trying to play through the pain. And it was so like, you know, he'd go out and shoot, you know, a little under, maybe one or two under, then go out and shoot like a 78, 80. So I feel like his game is finally where I'm ready to trust it. Uh, you can see that with projected ownership. He actually ranks out number one in my model. Um, this course should fit him. If he, if he keeps it at a fairway, it's the only thing that you know, can get still a little wayward. Uh, is the driver, but everything else has been spot on. Of course, you know, even last year, not in the best form at all. He had a T6 here. So, yeah, I'm all in. I mean, T5, T5, T21 with, a, you know, the cut at the players. I have no concern about that. Um, let's see what he did, what the issue was at the Phoenix. I'm just curious. So, again, accuracy is the one area that you could get a little concerned with. And actually, you know, he had a putting festivus here for a bit uh, on Bermuda. That's not typical. Um, I'll be happy if he gains a stroke with the putter. Yeah, so he just uh, he wasn't doing anything from Tita Green very well. Not too bad around or putting. So, yeah, uh, I'm in. I'm going to I'm gonna play some Gary Woodland. I'm going to skip over Keegan. You know, he hit it. The Valspar, yes, it bothered me. Um, he was playing really good golf going into the players. And then, of course, on 18, uh, you know, trying to just chip it in the fairway, run through the fairway. And uh, cost me a bit of money because if he would have stayed in second, I would have had a, or I had a good one as it was, but it would have had really good if he would have stayed. But neither here or there. Um, he's had a good history here. It makes sense. Um, I guess I'm just kind of more on Gary. I guess is the simplest way to put it. Um, so I'd rather for a hundred bucks more play play Gary. I, I I'm not saying don't play Keegan. I'm just saying for my top fifteen, he's not going to make it. I'm going to go with Gary. Uh, Fino, no. I think people are getting excited. I think if you wanted to bet him, I think he was 50 or 60 to one. I'd rather bet him and just see if he just has finally a good four days. But of course, you know, I think, I don't know if he won a match uh, at the WGC. I guess he did what he won his last one. I forgot who he, who he beat to kind of, was it Shoffley? I think he beat Xander. Neither here or there. Um, this would fit him very well back, you know, I don't know, a year ago, back uh, at the FedEx uh, playoffs. But I just haven't seen enough, and uh, 
terrified. Yeah. Even if he's T to green good, his putter's always been a, an issue. Now it's kind of like he's a little wayward with the driver. Um, yeah. Nope. Not for 9,100. No, thank you. Jason Day, you know, just so hit or miss. Uh, I can't get I, – w- I love Jason Day, but this is like three, four years ago. I mean, when everybody was probably wanting to play Jason Day. So if you want some differentiation, 9,000, that's crazy. I know we're in a weak field. But there's so many guys here below that I'd rather play. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, actually, he's never played the Valero. I did not know that. I wonder if he's trying to play his way uh, into the Masters. I don't know if he's in or not. I have not checked that. It's just kind of curious. But 9000 that's I feel like that's way overpriced for Jason Day. I don't care if it's in this field or not. I can go pick. I pick guys in the 7000 before I pick Jason Day there. So maybe that will come back and bite me. Uh, but no, thank you. And you can see projected ownership. Is very low, but like I said, if you want to get a little kooky, start your bills with fee now a day. Um, I guarantee you'll be if that breaks through, you're going to be the winner of a large GPP. All right, Adam Hadwin, of course, playing great golf. You can see these top three things are right what I want the 150 to 175, and eh, not so good, but everything else is really good. 8900, you can see, you know, he's made the last two cuts he's played here, uh, missed a couple four. I really like where his game at, a 7th, a ninth, a 26th, a 16th. That's a guy that's showing that he wants to win a tournament. Um, let's go click on Adam Hadwin just real quick. Again, you can see driving accuracy, big thing that I'm looking at. It is swaying me a lot. Um, and again, doesn't hit it very long. If you look at all the past winners here, none of them are bombers. Uh, they were all at the time hitting fairways and hitting it 285, 300 yards, but hitting a fairway. All right. Uh, let's just real quick go tick a gander. Oh yeah, if you want to look at putting splits, he's a good putter uh, over his career. That's over a twelve month period. Um, of course the Amex he owns, the Valspar, which you know not a bad comparable course. Um, I didn't even think about plugging that one in. They just came from there. Uh, that Twab, so some smaller tracks. He's had some success at the bigger tracks. I don't know if I guess I had to peg him. I would feel like he's more of a plotter, but uh, not a plotter. But yeah, I guess so. Yeah, more someone that would be, you know, on shorter tracks have more success. But it's everything that I want to get around this track. So it is in good form. So I'm going a little more in recent form with that one. Of course, Kevin Streelman's had a really good show in here. I don't know how many. Let me just go take a look at this. Curious. How many times he's played here and how many cuts he's made? All right. So he's played the Valero. Yeah, he's made the cut every time. He's played it six times. His best was 2019, the last time he played here. That's interesting. He didn't play here last uh, last year. I don't know if he was hurt or what the deal was with that. Um, let's take a real quick look. Just going to scan. So, yeah, I mean, he does the things. There's Sanderson Farms, RBC twice. The guy keeps it in play. You can see it almost identical, a little less than 300 on average, almost 70% accuracy. So, yep, pencil me in. Uh, I don't think I hopefully have to sell you anymore. And also, you can see pretty good recent form. He had a miscut Arnold Palmer, but I'm not. That course was just on the edge of disaster. So, I have make or miss, almost like the players. It doesn't bother me. The Phoenix, you know, what did he not do at the Phoenix? I would guess putting. So, I just feel like that's a track that is not hard. Uh, yeah, he lost on putting. Oh, the irons were a disaster. The good news, last couple uh, tournaments, the irons have been on. Let's hope that trend stays. You know, Johnny Vegas, in my mind, of course, he had a good showing at uh, Corrales, Punta Cana. Um, I think he's a good play, to be honest. I, 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 I literally will build a lineup with both these guys together, but I just the way this was working out, I picked one over the other, and you could honestly make the argument it should be Vegas, not List. But, you know, I also know Luke List's game. Also, you can see what he was doing at the WGC. I, he made it, I think, out of his pod, if I remember right. Um, anyways, it doesn't matter. It's not like that's a big sway. But, of course, one of the farmers, uh, he had that withdrawal at the players. I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, Miss kind of Arnold Palmer. I mean, literally, you could look at the Florida swing. as It's its own kind of uh, beast. And what I will probably look a little more at is, you know, and again, here's Luke List, but a T29 and a T17 and the three missed cuts. But I just feel like his game is a, in a really good spot. That's just my own opinion. He also can drive the ball very far and very accurate. Let's go take a look at that for you. So pretty accurate. 
I said very, you need to be over 60%. So, okay. And I guess Vegas must be right there. Let's go take a look at that. Where's Johnny Vegas at? He's actually above. All right. Well, I'm kind of making the, the story that you should play Johnny Vegas. But I'm going to go with list. Um, I will build lineups, as I said. I'll probably... I'll put a lineup together with some of the bombers that hit it somewhat straight. Um, so, yeah, I recommend that too. I already mentioned Davis Riley. Uh, of course, he had the second at Valspar. Um, you know, that's a big bump for Davis Riley. And I think a bit of it, even his odds from a betting perspective, I think we're like 30 or 40 to 1. Some ridiculous. I didn't bet him. Um, you know, everybody, you know, everybody's jumping on because if you look, I'm going to show you this right now. So on the Corn Ferry, he won the San Antonio Championship. And it says this, but as far as I know, everything I heard, it was on the Canyons course. But maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to look into that. It doesn't matter. Um, yes, he won on the Corn Ferry Tour on this course. Let me just take one more quick look at this. That was in 2020. So I beat guys like Taylor Pendrith. We see Paul Bajorn. I like the Smother Man, Will Z, uh, Benny Martin, who also just had a good show at Corrales. Ben Coles was there. Max McGreevy. A lot of these guys are now on the uh, tour. So okay, moving along. Russell Knox been playing really good golf. You can see that it's made his last five cuts. T six his best finish at the Players. You can see here though, missed three cuts here. You know, way back he made the cut, but. I feel like his game's in a really good spot. Again, he's doing everything that I want. It's making birdies. Uh, typically with Knox, it's the putter. You can see very accurate off the tee. Again, I'm leaning that way. That's the, the path that I've chosen. Um, like I said, will I build a couple lineups with some bombers? Yep. But most of my builds are going to be very accurate guys. Good off the tee. You know, just hit the fairway. Get me on the green. You can see the putter is typically his nemesis, but he... Irons and off the tee has been really nice. So I uh, won the Travelers. He won the HSBC. That would be across the pond. RBC had a second. So funny enough, you could also make an argument that he shorter tracks the Honda's a par 70, just throw over 7,000 yards. Um, but, it, you know, again, RBC keeps showing up. But I think he could do well here, even though it says, you know, maybe not. But I like Russell Knox. So I'm on him. Charlie Hoffman, all right. I mean, I had him on the uh, cover of my uh, preview show, the Charlie Hoffman Open. He's won three point seven million. He's you know just owned this place. His game, look at this. He doesn't even, like register with his driver over his last twelve rounds. He's like the worst in the field with the driver. Now it's golf. You can turn it around. I mean, over his career, um, you know, he's been fifty four percent rolling twelve months. But if we go look at just this disaster, I showed you this, guys, uh, I believe yesterday. Um, I can't do it. I bet him. I think it was 75 to 1. I put a small bet on him just, you know, for shits and giggles. But I'm not playing him. Um, if he, you know, I'll play him in showdown. If he shows me something on Thursday, uh, I'll play him like Friday, Saturday, or whatever. But right now, he is not making the cut. Mito Piera, um, no issues. Could definitely play him, I guess. I just I'm going with my broke back pick right here at eight thousand. So uh, I'm passing. You see, the putter is the issue, and you need to be a good putter here. The driver is also a little off. I, I mean, typically Patty Kazire, where he has some issues, is the driver. Um, so he's probably like a little off the cup. You see, he's forty one out of you know out of the field. Let's go take a look at where he falls. Same thing, you know, pops about three hundred fifty five percent. I'd like him to be over sixty. But I can live with it. You know, gains on Bermuda. You see the off the tee. You know, it's not always that way, but lately. But approach around the green putting. Um, that's interesting. He gained almost eight strokes at the players with the putter. And let's go see where he's had some success. So kind of island courses. Some shorter courses. He did have a good showing at the Sanderson. So that's good. The Valero. Sanderson. So what it's got me a little bit back on uh, old Patty Kazire is this is where he kind of started turning on in Texas last year. And so I'm hoping uh, that that's going to happen again. 
So he's going to make it. Uh, Ryan Palmer, hard not to play him here. I mean, you, you know, I kind of showed you guys, if you take a longer history, the guy's had a ton of good finishes here. Of course, he's a local Texan. But a lot like Hoffman, his game has been trash. So I'm out on that. Um, Bobby Mack, I think some people are a little bit excited about, but he, you see he's long and, and can get very wrong. Uh, but everything else, just nothing's enough there for me. Uh, he's also a first time playing this course. I do believe some course experience does help here, um, especially around the greens and on the greens. So out on that. Same with Ross Booth. It'd be his first time playing here. Sahith, I told you, you know, I I bet him. Um, uh, but I think I'm not I'm gonna pass with DFS. I mean, Kucher, I think, is a pretty solid play. You know, it's been kind of very hit or miss, but he had a good show at the Valspar. He's done excellent here. Uh, because again, he does that exactly what i'm looking for 285 300 yards max yeah 289 65 percent accuracy good putter good around the green irons can kind of be as you see hit or miss um but i'd sprinkle him in i have no problems with matt kuchar you see model rank 16th um ricky fowler just that right there ricky could come out and shoot a 67 opening day and then come out and shoot an 80 the next um you can see you go on tournament history, uh, I didn't even see what he was from a betting perspective. I would be more interested in probably betting him. But again, if you want to go with that crazy lineup, uh, if you want just a crazy unique lineup, throw Day, Finau, and Ricky to kick off your uh, you know team, and I guarantee you'll have a unique uh, build. And who knows? You know, it's golf. Ian Poulter rates out well from a modeling perspective. Um, he what lost his first two matches and won his last at the WGC. Again, I'm not really putting a whole lot into that. I think it's a pretty good fit, to be honest. Uh, has he ever played here before? So a cut way back and uh, a T37. I mean, what he does kind of fits this course. So, you know, I, I he was up there, but I, he just didn't make the cut. But I think, uh, you know, again, sprinkle him in, play him. I have no issues with him. Cage Lee, right? His last win was uh, AT&T Byron Nelson, if I remember correct. Does well in Texas. Um, and a pretty good ball striker for a while there. He was uh, really, so you can see 300 yards, 65%. The putter can cause some issues, but if you see here, he's been putting, you know, positive strokes gain, except for the Arnold Palmer. Doing well off the tee. Irons are a little suspicious. And he went, what, TPC Craig Ranch. Yeah, the Byron Nelson. That would have been nice. I think he was 200 to one. And I did not have the bat. Um, that hurt. Whenever a guy like that wins, um, that's why you guys always see me betting the long shots. All right, let me get this going a little faster for you. Brendan Steele, uh, you can see, I think he's made the cut every time. A lot like Streelman, I, th I always think they're like doppelgangers for me. You can see perfect in everything I want up here. The putter is the issue. He also has some more pop off his bat. You can see average 305 yards. Uh, accuracy is almost a 60. You know, this is good to see the players. All, you know, he had this string of miscuts. For a bit there, which you know wasn't good. He's won the Fortnite a couple times. He won the Valero, which I totally forgot back in 2011. So there you go. That's a long time ago. Uh, good showing at the Zozo, no cut event. The Honda recently. What else? Sony. The Valero again. So a win and then a fourth again. So long ago, you can't really put a lot of stock in it. But and that's not why I picked him. He just does what I want. Uh, and for the price tag, 7600 bucks. yep, sign me up. Okay, Doug Gim. You know, you could make an argument for Doug Gim. I, I think he's a pretty good ball striker. It's just his putter. Um, has he ever played here before? Yep, T44. So 7600 I have no issues with it. I'll just put it there. I'm actually going with Denny McCarthy, which is kind of going a bit against the grain of what I'm looking for. But I, I don't know if I'm trying to wish this, uh, but I've been just – waiting for Dougie boy or Diddy boy, Dougie boy. I've been waiting for Diddy McCarthy to get a win. And I just, for some reason, have that gut feeling. This is that Spidey tingle sense that he could have a good show. I don't think he's going to win here, but I think he could have a good show. And you can see, you know, pretty good show in two out of the three for past, you know, it's been doing okay. And then of course he had a pretty good run. Where was that at? So driving accuracy typically is pretty good. Uh, of course, you know, I don't know right now, but he was the best putter on tour. I don't know where he ranks. I'm guessing top 10 still. You can see 
just a bad ball striker, but I guess he fits that Andrew Landry kind of, you can see that the T ball has been better. Uh, the irons are still a little suspicious. Best show was at the Amex. Actually, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to see, cause he had a pretty good. Yeah. So right here is where I was really on him. Um, and it makes sense. These are shorter tracks fit him probably a little better. Um, then he got in some big boy, kind of a little tougher, but I don't know. Uh, he was, I was kind of on off and I, I'm going to go with him. So you can see ownership. So he would be one of my more unique kind of plays. I don't think uh, ownership will be too high on him. Lato Griffin, right? He's, uh, pretty sure he's either, he went to college in Texas. I think he was born in California, but he has Texas ties. I know that for a fact, maybe because he won the Houston open, uh, is why I'm thinking that, but you can just see his game has been just poo poo. Um, you know, but has made the cut here two times he's played. You know, was playing pretty decent. I'm not too worried about the players or the Valspar. Well, the Valspar, I guess it could be T-ball. You see, you know, can gain with the putter. So there's a Houston Open, and that is at the harder of the tracks, not Memorial Park. That is at uh, Country Club of Houston. Um, Amex Shriners, there's that no-cut event, no-cut event. He had that crazy hot streak. Uh, well, that was... I think even before that had the same things. 2020 also had a good showing. Yep, there it is. So, you know, who knows? He's kind of hit or miss right now for me, and I'm kind of more of a miss. Marty Laird actually fits the kind of mold that I was looking for, um, and I'll sprinkle him in. I'll play him here or there. You know, has uh, an amazing – did he win this? I think he might have won the Valero at one time, but he does everything I want. Didn't win. Oh yeah, he did. 2013. All right. So party Marty. Um, I'll sprinkle him a little. I, I think honestly it was between him and Danny McCarthy. And I just took a, I'm taking a flyer. Not going to lie to you. He was the one I was selected. And then I just, for whatever reasons, uh, this is going with a little bit of gut intuition. And of course he's just dominant with that putter. So we'll see, see how that works out. Uh, uh, all right, last guys. I think Troy Merritt. I'm sorry, I'm gonna skip through Lucas Glover. I like, he of course, won the John Deere, he's done well here. Uh, fourth and a four T14 and a cut way back in 2015. I think Troy Merritt's been playing good golf. I have no issues with him. Chad Ramey just won the Corrales, his first win on tour. Kind of, you know, is a little bit getting me off. Um, I actually like Nick Taylor. So these are, I think, my last two guys. Oh, I got Neesmith, too. All right, let's run through these real quick. All right, Nick Taylor, doing everything I want. You know, making good recent form. He's played here quite a bit and has made four out of the five. So I'm in on Nick Taylor. I'll click on him real quick for you. So you see, again, under 300 yards, over 6% accurate. The putter is what's been holding him back. Um, so on POA, he gained a little. Pretty much since the Bermuda, he has not been gaining. Brian Stewart, you guys know, a bit of a Stewart fan, and he's been playing really good golf. He does everything that I want. The putter again, but, you know, had that good showing at Corrales, the Honda, Valspar. You know, he's had a T4 here. So, again, it just shows you how, you know, he is a pure plotter, just fairways, greens, hope he makes a putt. Um, I think CT Pan is not a bad play here. Richard Bland. Go with uh, Dick Blandy. Uh, I'll probably sprinkle him in, especially if he's that. Oh, I think he's a good fit for here. Uh, Dylan Fratelli, he, as I mentioned uh, in my bets, I, I bet him. He is also a local. Of course, he's South African, but, you know, lives here. Been living here for a while. Um, also won the John Deere. So back to my John Deere kind of thing I'm on. Yeah, Lahiri, right? Showed up at the players. That was crazy. Um, you could see that. Nothing tells you from a modeling perspective, even this. So you don't know, is that a flash in a pan? We'll see. But I'm not going to be playing Lahiri. Patty Perez been playing decent golf. Uh, I always think of Patty. I like him on the West Coast better, but he's been playing good. So, But I'm going to go with Neesmith. I mean, his game fits what I want, and he's got more distance, but he's you know he's a great tee to, ball, you know, tee to green. It's just what's going to happen with that putter. You can see Valspar, he gained almost four strokes. Uh, before that, he was losing, 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 and then, you know, did all right at um, POA, POA, but that is Bermuda, so we'll see, and I'm, I think at Valspar, they also had the overseed POA tri trivials on it, so I don't know, we'll just see that energy, so I'm all Smith, and I think that is my last pick, yep, that's my 15, all right, 
let's go jump back. I'll summarize this for you guys. Okay, to summarize my top five, my fab five picks for the Valero Texas Open. Leading off, you got Rory McIlroy. Don't think I need to sell you anything on that. Let's just hope that the irons from 150 in are a little better. Hideki Matsuyama, hopefully that you feel good and that you do not withdraw and uh, that you're healthy. And, of course, you know, are you just testing this for the Masters? I don't know. Both of these guys, like I said, you could have some reasoning on uh, to be a little nervous. As an artist, is their mind, are they here purely as a warm-up session? Uh, we'll see. I'm sure they come out guns a blazing. Um, you know, they're going to try and win a tournament. Don't get me wrong. Gary Woodland, first time I've picked you in over a year. Don't let me down, Gary, because I've done this with Ricky. Um, Ricky Fowler, I played him, I don't know, it's been four or five months. I picked him one time, and of course, he missed a cut, and I just won't go back to Ricky probably ever. So, Gary Woodland, don't do that to me. Uh, Corey Connors, of course, amazing, you know, one here is a Monday qualifier. His game is a prototypical game that I'm looking for. Just hopefully the putter stays at a great WGC Dell match play. And then Chris Kirk. Also, he's either top 10 or he's missing a cut. Hopefully, we get the top 10 out of him. My on deck, next guy's up, would be, of course, Streelman. Great course history. Keeping the ball in play. Same with Knox. Not the greatest course history, but great recent form and does everything I want. He needs to putt. A lot of these guys that I'm showing here need to putt. Now, Hadwin, actually, fun enough, good putter. Just hopefully he keeps the irons and the driver up. Luke List, uh, you know, of course, he had to withdraw the players, which just was purely he knew he wasn't going to make the cut. Wasn't going to go out in that cold air and wind. and So I think it's a good fit. I think you could flip a coin between him and Vegas or literally play him and Vegas uh, in the same lineup. And then Dave McCarthy, out of all the guys, you're my a little bit off the kind of path. Um, don't, you do one thing very well, and you need to do that here. Uh, there's a lot of three putts that happen on, this, on these greens, but I need you to also hit some fairways, and really it's more of the irons that I'm a little nervous about. And then my unsung, my last five guys in, of course, Brian Stewart, just plot your way around, keep doing what you're doing, make some putts. You got Neesmith. I don't expect to see what we just saw at the Valspar, but if you're anything close to that, uh, I think and you've always been a great ball striker. So just keep that putter work and even gain a stroke or two. And you'll have a good finish. Patty Gazire, it's been a while, buddy. Uh, don't let me down. Back to my broke back pick. I don't think I bet him because I was a little shocked that his odds were like, I think it was like 35 to one on DraftKings. So I don't bet Patty Kazire unless he's at least 50 to one. Uh, so we'll see when that comes about. Uh, Steel, same thing. Uh, my doppelganger for Streelman, as far as I'm concerned, but uh, he's got a little more pop in the bat, but he also get a little more wayward. Good course history here. And uh, Nick Taylor, last guy in uh, out of my top 15. Been playing really good golf. Just need the putter to work for Mr. Nick Taylor. Okay, and then uh, from a one and done, I went over this very quickly. I'm going to do it real quick for you guys again. If you missed yesterday's show, of course, we already talked about Charlie Hoffman. This is looking at the past five years at this tournament, who has gained the most strokes total. Of course, there's no 2020. That was canceled due to COVID. And your top two, of course, Hoffman, Connors. Kevin Chappell, that's a risky one. Um, a lot of this was done before his injury. So, you know, he's kind of hit or miss. He can go out and shoot. He's a great uh, first-round leader. And he's not bad for showdown, but that's about it. To give you four days. I haven't seen him put the four days together in a while. He had a good showing at Corrales. I think he top 20, um, I believe. Check those facts. But I think he had a pretty good showing at Corrales. Of course, Chris Kirk, Streelman, Palmer. That game's trash. Same with Hoffman. His game's been trash. Snedeker. Uh, I mean, he had that T6. I uh, got Grace. Party Marty Lairs had a good showing here. Siwoo, Jordan, Kucher, and then Glover. Um, it's funny he's not bringing up the one before, but he had a missed cut before that. So that's the guys that have had gained the most strokes here over the history over the last five years. With that said, what I'm looking at from a one and done, Corey Connors, what I'm leaning. If you got to, you know, I don't think a lot of people, I don't know. I don't know how Hoffman is going to fall in. Um, I guess it's all depending where you're at. Uh, if you could take a risk, you know, go with it. I mean, Corey Connors, the risk there is right. He's played a ton of golf. Um, so hopefully he can, you know, make it through the four days, get you a top 10. Win it again would be great. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna play Hoffman. I put him in here purely just hey, I recognize the guy has an amazing course history here, but uh, recent form has been so bad. Kirk, same thing, uh, but good good on uh, both. Good course history, good recent form. Uh Streelman getting better recent form, has a good course history. And then if you gotta get unique, you know, if you're trying to make up some ground, 
Uh, I doubt a lot of people have played uh, Smell the Glove Glover, but, you know, he's had last two years here good. One at the John Deere. He's an amazing ball striker. It's the putter with him. So, but he knows he's green. So he's putted well here before. So, you know, if you got it, you know, like I said, I've actually moved up pretty good over the last couple of weeks. I'll probably stay more with a condom kind of pick. That'd be more on Corey Connors. Of course, you could use Rory. You could use Mats. Um, I don't think anybody, I mean, Jordan Spieth, you know, why not? But these are the five guys that I'm kind of looking at. So that's it for one and done. And with that said, that's the show. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Click that like button and uh, hey, tell me, of course, down below who you think is going to win the Masters to get in that giveaway. And if you've not subscribed, you got to do that before then. And uh, hit the notification button. I have three shows a week. And last but not least, follow me on Twitter. I, uh, you know, today tweeted, I don't know if you guys saw it, that uh, Mr. Tiger Woods is on the grounds at Augusta. And I guess he's going to play a practice round to see how he can hold up. So that's kind of interesting. Everything that came out of his mouth, uh, especially when he was getting his Hall of Fame, you know, the Golf Hall of Fame award, just like in his pressers said, there's no way possible he would play uh, the Masters. But I don't know. He must be feeling maybe a little better than he thought. So we'll see. I'm not holding my breath, but I just let you guys know that. So, hey, follow me on Twitter to get that kind of amazing updated information. All right, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow when I have I put up my Before the Lock show. And I had a great evening. Talk to you later. <laughs>